story is about a missionary who lived in India many years ago. Sudar Singh was fifteen when he came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Sudar loved Jesus Christ so much that he was glad to give his life for him. Sudar was the youngest son of a wealthy Sikh family of India. When the rest of Sudar's family found out that he had become a Christian, they were all very angry, and the whole family turned against him. One day his family secretly gave him poison in his meal, and he was then turned out to die alone. Almost dead, he found his way to the mission station. There, with the tender care of the missionaries, he slowly recovered. When he was well again, he attended mission school. His Christian friends wanted him to become a preacher when he finished school. Instead, God would be leading Sudar, like the Apostle Paul, on missionary journeys to reach others for him. Think about this. Sudar has lost his family. They even tried to put him to death. Jesus knew this may happen to some Christians. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive many times as much at this time and in the age to come eternal life. Jesus gives us hope no matter how horrible this present life may be. Jesus gives us hope of eternal life with Him and a family in heaven where all things will be good. Jesus does not promise us an easy, fun-filled life here on earth. Always remember our Father in heaven cannot wait to welcome us to heaven, where He will wipe away every tear. The good news is that you can start today knowing that you have a loving Father in heaven by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior and inviting Him into your life. Siddhar Singh attended the mission school in India and grew to be very respected by other Christians. Many wanted him to stay at the mission school and become a preacher. Instead, God led Sudar to put on the robe of a sadhu, that is, a holy man, and travel from town to town, preaching the gospel to all who would listen. He wanted to be like Jesus in every way he could. People learned to love him and to look for his coming. But Sudar was not happy to stay where he was known and loved. He felt that God was calling him to climb the great white wall of the Himalayan mountains and go to the strange country of Tibet with the story of Jesus. These were the highest mountains in the world, and only the bravest and strongest would try to climb them. Think about this. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What is a yoke? A yoke is a collar that is put on a pair of oxen to hold them together, which helps the farmer to direct the oxen to pull the plow in the field. Sudar put on the yoke of Jesus, so that he was teamed with Jesus. Jesus then directed Sudar to share the good news with many people wherever Jesus led him. The people saw that Sudar was gentle and humble in heart, just like Jesus, and they loved him. Now, as Jesus led Sudar, he would hike up the great Himalayan mountains to the people of Tibet. Sudar climbed higher and higher towards Tibet. Soon there were few trees to be seen, and the air became very cold. Only very strong men attempt a trip like this to Tibet. Sudar was on a mission to bring the good news to the people of Tibet. The wind and snow lashed against Sudar as he stumbled over a man lying in the snow. And, like the good Samaritan, Sudar stopped to help him. At last he reached the land of Tibet. Sudar made the long, hard journey as God directed. And many people heard the good news about God sending his only son, Jesus, to earth to die for their sins. As his visit came to an end, the people begged, Come back to us and tell us more. Sudar traveled back down to India, but now the Lamast monks had become angry with his teachings and were waiting for him. 
Think about this. Sudar had a mission to Tibet. God planted that desire in Sudar's heart, and Sudar was obedient to God's call, no matter what the obstacle. Nothing held Sudar back. He was a holy man. Like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. Do you know what holy means? It means set apart for service to God. To be holy, you must also be faithful in complete devotion and trust of God. Many people try to be holy by doing good things, but that is not what Siddhar was doing. He was a holy man because he listened to God's voice and was faithful in doing as God directed. This is very different from trying on your own strength to be good. To be holy, should you do what you think is good or do what God wants you to do? The most important thing God wants you to do is believe that he went through great suffering to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. God wants you to believe this so that you may live forever with him. That's good news. Once you believe, then you are a holy person, set apart for service to God. Now listen to the voice of God in your heart, and like Siddhar, be obedient to God. God has promised to meet all your needs. Sudar traveled back down to India. But now the Lamist monks had become angry with Sudar's teaching people the good news and were waiting for him. The Lamist monks liked their false gods and did not want to hear anyone talk of the one true God. So when they caught Sudar, they dragged him to a dry well and threw him in it and locked the lid door over the opening. They then left him to die. How long he lay there in the well, he didn't know. It must have been days before he was aroused from his half-sleep by the sound of someone removing the cover to the well. A rope was let down, and a voice told him to hang on. How he even had strength enough to hold on, he did not know, but at last he was out in the fresh, pure air again. When the Lamist monk leader heard that he was out again, he was very angry. But he could not find out who had taken the key from his belt and opened the lid to the well. He was afraid to do anything more to Siddhar Singh, and angrily told him to leave the country. Think about this. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell of all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. Who do you think took the key and opened the lid to the well? The good news is that God is there to lift you up from whatever pit you find yourself in. Rejoice! Once back in India, Sudar Singh found many countries asking for him to come and visit them, America, England, and Europe. Everywhere he went in all these countries, people loved him because they said he was so much like Jesus. As years went by, he knew he must go back to Tibet again. Surely his friends there would be waiting to hear more about Jesus. But his friends in India begged him not to go. Didn't he have a weak heart now? He could never make it over the steep mountains again. But I must go, said Sudar. And he told them all goodbye with his face set toward the mountains. He was never heard from again. For years his friends watched and waited for his return, asking travelers for some word of him. Perhaps, instead of going to Tibet, he had gone to heaven to be with the Lord he loved so much. Think about this. It is so hard to see someone leave. Have you ever watched someone you love leave in a car or from an airport or a train station? It is no fun saying goodbye, especially if you fear you may never see the person again. Jesus had appeared to his disciples many times after his resurrection from the dead, 
how they loved seeing him. And then the day came when Jesus was to return to heaven. He was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they gazed intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. That is our living hope. Jesus will return just the way he left. The good news is that you can be ready to welcome him back as your Savior and Lord.